What's up guys? Uh, so I got the returnless fuel pump stuff sorted out. Uh, show you what all I got figured out and working and how all that works. And uh, so we're going to take a look at all the hardware and then what's going to happen probably in the next couple days uh, to kind of button it all up. But I've been doing some test driving and looking at some data logs, how well the fuel pressure responds to manifold pressure and uh, how the mega squirt system kind of sorts all that stuff out. All right, so we're in the back of the car. Uh, the battery is actually located underneath the studs underneath the fender or inside the fender. So uh, this was the remote relay we added a couple weeks ago. So the idea is the main power ooh, main power comes into this red wire and comes up through a grommet next to the battery. It's tied off to the battery cutoff switch and it comes up and it powers the relay in the red wire so the blue wire is the power out of the relay which gets looped into this 25 amp dc motor controller the red wires and then the red wire loops back out and down through that hole and you put a grommet around it uh, the black wire is the ground to the motor and this other black wire to the left this guy runs around and is tied off to this ground back here I might have to come up with a different ground arrangement later, but it seems to be working so far. Um, so yeah, so now the pulse width stuff from the computer comes in on this blue wire. And that goes down to an analog input on this DC, speed, DC motor speed controller. So we have a capacitor, resistor, and the blue wire goes back up to the Megascore box. So what we're doing is we're PWMing the Megascore box output. And when we're doing that, the uh, when we're doing that, we get a different analog value coming out or being presented to the analog pin. So that correlates to a, uh, a duty cycle that the Megascore commands based on the fuel pressure. So if fuel pressure is low, the PID loop is going to increase the duty cycle, which is going to actually reduce the voltage on the analog input on this end uh, because it's a pull up, internal pull-up resistor. So we're actually pulling that low to ground with a capacitor in there to kind of filter all that. So uh, higher voltage is off, lower voltage is on. And so there's settings inside the computer that you can set, or inside the DC motor controller that you can set up to change how that works. So I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. All right, here we are on the engine side. Uh, fuel pressure sensor up top like we had before. Now I put a cap on the output of the uh, fuel pressure regulator. And so my return line from the tank is just kind of hanging here. I need to probably pull that fitting off and cap it because it was kind of smelling like fuel yesterday. As, the, as you're driving, it sloshes around and you get a little bit of pressure in the tank, it's gonna push fuel, I think, up towards the top here. Uh, just kind of the way it works. So my intent is uh, I'm going to pull this off here. Uh, temperature sensors is going to get shoved straight in the back of the fuel rail. I don't know how well that's going to work up at first, but I think that's what we're going to try. It's got to be better than what it's doing now because it's getting no fuel flow through it at all. Uh, and then <clears throat> I have a fitting coming that will allow me to either replace this with a, a, a 3 8 pipe to AN6 with an eighth inch tap in the top. So I can just rearrange this stuff a little bit and get it to feed into the back and the pressure sensor will just stick straight up or out to the side. The other option, <clears throat> the other option is on this end. They make cute little adapters that will go on here that thread onto the AN6 just like this, but then it's got a short little piece where you can put your eighth inch uh, pressure sensor hole, and then it's got the nipple, the AN6 nipple. So this will just get moved out here a little bit and the pressure sensor will sit here. So I'm still kind of debating. I mean, I can even put it on that end also, uh, extend that around, uh, but I don't know. I need to figure out a different way for this hose to come up here and how it connects to the fuel system. All right, so this is the inside of the car. I know it's a mess. Uh, it ended up like this when I was trying to figure out where my extra PWM output went to. 
to tie all this together. So once I'm kind of happy with what's set up, I'll go ahead and, and shove it all back up under the dash and get it all buttoned up. But um, so here, this blue wire is what runs the ground side of this relay, which is the old fuel pump relay. So I had to change up the way this works a little bit. So I was originally gonna use this boost output to drive the fuel pump. The problem was within the tuning software, you cannot, uh, at least the firmware version I'm on, 1.4, uh, you cannot assign an output and still have the old fuel pump output drive your regular fuel pump relay and have that separate output to drive the fuel pump system in the back. It just doesn't work that way. So when you assign the fuel pump output to say boost or nitrous one or VVT or whatever, uh, you lose the function of the fuel pump dedicated output line, which is just a ground, it's just creating a ground. So I created a general output line for the boost. And what that does is if the ECU is on for less than four seconds, I turn it on. Or if the engine RPM is above like 20 RPM, I turn it on. So now it's gonna function exactly like the fuel pump output used to. So you turn the key on and it would go high for, or it would turn the relay on for two or three seconds and shut off. And then as soon as you cranked on it, it would turn on. So that's kind of what it's doing now, uh, where I have it set up to where if the ECU ti internal timer is less than three, less than four seconds, and, or, or the engine RPM is above 20 RPM, it turns that output on, which now turns on the relay turns on the relay which then turns on this block of stuff turns on uh, coils turns on the transmission controller turns on a couple other things so now what happens is the original fuel pump out from the ECU is here that now gets passed into the blue wire and that blue wire is what runs to the back this is that bundle of gray cable with the brown, white, black, and blue. That gets ran to the back and that's what drives the uh, speed controller in the back. All right, so plug the USB cable in the laptop. So here's the internal settings for this motor controller. Uh, right now the car's not on, but you can see, see some temperatures. So 10 Celsius, which is, I don't know, 40 and change. Um, has a low VN counter. It says, hey, there's not enough voltage to do anything. Uh, but you can see the analog in is sitting at 3 volts. For analog 1, sitting at 3 volts. So uh, let me go ahead and crank the car up and get it running, and we'll see what this looks like. Alright, so the car's running. <clears throat> we can see the analog in is around 2 volts which correlates to like 28, 27% motor speed. <clears throat> so we can see our input voltage is sitting at 14.4. Internal temperature is coming up a little bit, 14 Celsius. Current driving the motor is around nine amps. Uh, if you hooked a multimeter up to a cross, you'd only see it's putting at about three volts or so to the motor. current limit uh, there's other motor settings you can change you can change like how quick it reacts to certain things you can change the frequency that you're PWM in the motor at the fuel pump and there's some other settings you can dig into you can change like where the low voltage happens how long it times out for uh, max temperatures of the uh, controller and so forth And then you can also change the way the input works out. So here you change where your thresholds are uh, for low or high voltage correlating to a, a direction. And you also have this scaling degree where it's, you can either change it from linear or have a little bit of expo in the center. Kind of change how soft it works at the bottom. So you can even change uh, the commands to make the motor run. So we're just using analog in, uh, analog channel one, and then here's our scaling ranges. So all of that correlates to, so you can see here, zero is gonna be right in the center. And then as the bubble goes up, you're increasing the speed or the voltage of the pump to get the pump to spin faster. All right, so <clears throat> here's on the mega squirt side. So I can see fuel pump duty 
130%. Fuel pressure is in KPA, so 230 KPA is around uh, 34 pounds. It's pretty, pretty rock solid there. Uh, AFR is a little fat because it's cold. We're warming it up. Fuel temp's pretty chilly. Engine map's holding at 35. So if we rev it slightly, Includes the returnless fuel pump system and how that works and all the little components that are in part of it and uh, Probably been better just to buy the Ford fuel pump driver box that they sell, but uh, I don't know got more flexibility and more things I could do with this one. So uh, I'll provide feedback later date see how it's doing if it's still working or if I had to swap everything back around which seems to be the theme lately, but uh, Yeah, see you guys later